said to, to uh, Pips once, I'm, I'm madly, crazily in love with you. I love you so, so much. And she said, and I put up with you. <laughs> it was a joke. My name is Nikki Gumble. I'm Pippa Gumble. And we are involved in Alpha at all around the world. And you are, are a pastor. We've been running a church for some years, which we've just we were added involved in. involved in HTB for 46 years, from 1976 to 2022. And we also do something called the Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumble, which we've done every day for the last 14 years. We have been married for 46 years. We met because I was, it was before I was... Before either of us were Christians. Christians yep. And I wanted to get in, get to a nightclub. I had a friend staying and we wanted to get into this nightclub. We always went to the top of the King's Road. Called Francoise. It was pretty grotty. And um, you had to be a member. So I wanted someone to get me in. Five pounds to be a member. <laughs> and I wanted someone to get me in. And so, so they gave me Nicky's number. I rang him up. You've got a party going on. I then. went there every night. Yep. When and I was I was 17. Uh, and that's where I ended up every night. Uh, whatever we'd been doing earlier on, we'd always go to the, the nightclub straight afterwards. And that's where we'd all meet up and have lo fun. Loads party. of teenagers. We were, it was hilarious. Anyway, so I just rang him up. That's how we met. And yeah, and, and then, I got you into the nightclub. Mm, you did. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and we, beca we became friends. Yeah. We're so, we're so blessed because we had that friendship. Then also, I used to give her advice about her boyfriends. But, but, and then you became a Christian and became very zealous and terrifying. And that put me off becoming a Christian. And I thought you'd gone a little bit crazy. I saw her. I used, I, so when I first became a Christian, I, um, I, well, I knew that, that because I'd been an atheist uh, up till then for the first 18 years of my life, well, I, I was an argumentative atheist mm -hmm. and um, didn't have a Christian upbringing like that. Um, and so I was determined to tell everybody I knew about Jesus because I thought the most loving thing that you could do is tell people about Jesus. I still think it's the most loving thing that you can do. But you have to do it sensitively. And I didn't do it sensitively to begin with. And um, uh, so when I next saw Pips after I'd become a Christian... Mm -hmm. Um, Nikki came up to me and told me that I looked awful and needed Jesus, which wasn't the best way of starting. On the dance floor, I said that to her. <laughs> yes, I think you did. Um, so I thought he was gone a bit crazy and I decided to keep far away from him. I but, put her off for a long time. But it, I was... I and mean, you did finally become a Christian through somebody totally different. Yeah, I met a whole group of young Christians who'd come to London, who'd recently become Christians, very excited about their friend Faith, and were all hanging out in this thing place called the kitchen it was a sort of um it was like a restaurant a uh, sort of it was actually a, a converted garage that you'd go and hang out in and i started going along not knowing they were even christians and somebody there to told me about jesus and about this amazing relationship you could have with him and so there i gave my life to christ at that place and then we re-met up from that yeah and then um there was an event at the university that I was at, a party, and Pips had been invited by someone else. <laughs> um, and I was a very keen Christian. I only invited my sister and my parents to the, to the party. <laughs> um, but I ended up with Pips, um, and we ended up dancing all night, playing tennis in the morning. And I fell crazily in love and haven't really faltered from that mm -hmm. in the last, that would have been in 19... That would have been two years before we got married, 48 years ago. You're very good on numbers, Nikki. <laughs> Got to be good at something. <laughs> How did I know that Pips was the one? That's a very interesting question. Because um, it, we, we were friends before we were uh, lovers. And... Um, we were friends for several years, really, weren't we? Mm. Yeah, yes, I think I think it was a gradual um, realization that that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with Nikki. We'd become Christians at, at a similar time. 
We were excited about what was going on in the church, we were involved with all those things. And together we were going to lots of prayer meetings, getting involved with the church and just spending time together. And then we realised we had the same vision really for our lives. And as a result of that, I think we we felt that it would be right to do it together, spend the rest of our lives doing the same thing together, mm. having the same vision. Um, it, and it just sort of gradually grew into that. Yeah. Was there anything you were hesitant about before we got married, Pips? I think you were quite young and I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing. Possibly a little bit naive about sort of thinking things through. I didn't spend hours thinking, is Nikki the right thing, person to marry? Right her, thing. Right, <laughs> right thing, right person to marry. I think um, Nikki asked me, I sort of out of the blue, and I just thought, oh, that's a good idea, without really thinking it through. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody else, but it just sort of seemed a fun thing to do. <laughs> I didn't actually think about asking her to marry me till the day I asked her. I was just like, I went for a walk, thought, oh, maybe when I come back, I'll ask her to marry me. So that's what we did. I said, the conversation went like this. I, I wasn't sure that she would accept so I didn't want to um, didn't want to be too rejected. So I said to her, "Would you ever like to get married?" Because I thought that was a fairly safe question to ask. <laughs> so she said, "Yes." So then I said, "Who would you most like to marry?" <laughs> to which she answered, "Prince Charles." <laughs> it's true. I did so, say that, but so, it was such a silly question. So <laughs> then I said, "Well, would you marry me?" And thankfully, she said yes. <laughs> But it wasn't a very great way to do a proposal. I mean, I didn't have anything planned. We didn't. I didn't get down on one knee. I didn't have anything planned. You hadn't got a ring. I hadn't got a ring. We got home and told my parents that we got engaged. And my mother got out an old jewelry box and looked through it and tried to find an engagement ring. That is so true. She said, "How? What did she say?" <laughs> she went through. This one any good? No, missing a stone. This one any good? Oh, a bit broken. Oh, this one. Wouldn't that one do? And that was literally the ring. That was the, the one ring. we had, and it, it broke. And we took it to the jewellers, <laughs> and they said, "I'm sorry, it's just not not worth repairing. It's not worth anything." <laughs> so that was a that was the engagement ring. <laughs> was there ever a moment? when we felt like we were walking away from each other. Oh, definitely during the engagement. Uh, and uh, well, not during the engagement, during the, during the, um, uh, what do you call it? The bit before the engagement. The, um, the, the Before you asked me to marry you? Well, yeah, when we were sort of um, going out, or at least I thought we were going out. Uh, but one time I went round to see her and um, this guy turned up with, 30 red roses you do exaggerate. and took her off to to the, to some ball and I was left cleaning the cupboards. Then I definitely thought you were walking away from me. <laughs> I think you exaggerate <laughs> and I've put up with your stories all these years. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that Sandy Miller, who was our boss, uh, the vicar of Holy Trinity Brompton and who we worked with, said at our wedding was... Uh, in our marriage preparation. Oh, no, no, it's go on, say the wedding. It's our oh, wedding okay. service. Oh, yeah, yeah, go on, so, so sorry. <laughs> You're no, running my story. No, no, I'm so sorry, you go, you go, you go. Um, you go he you said, go. the world will strike at your unity, but you must fight the world. And I've always found that helpful when even if you're sort of irritated or cross or things that are disappointing or, or whatever it is, to try and think it's not Nikki, it's the world, it's the devil, it's... Life is tricky, is hard, and therefore to realise it's those things that are striking at your unity, and not to try and fight each other in those moments, but to try and see that it's actually the things are around, and to try and uh, sort of get together to to deal with the issues around you. I think the most challenging things in our marriage have been um, uh, bereavement and sickness. Uh, the two things um, that are the biggest challenge to our lives, really, isn't it? The, the, um, uh, I think the hardest things for me have been the loss of, I guess, my parents when I was very quite young, um, but then also my closest friend, one of my very closest friends, uh, dying on the squash court with me at age 42, leaving six children. And that was mm -hmm. a huge challenge. 
to my faith and to um, everything, really. Um, uh, and I think a huge challenge also has been the times when we've had sickness. Sickness, and your. Well, I've had a bit of lung cancer. Um, Nikki's <laughs> had an aorta. Uh, it, it's life is. Aorta. I've got. I think everyone has an aorta. <laughs> so, I, I had an aortic. Enlarged. A aneurysm. Aneurysm. That's the word. Um, <laughs> and that, I mean, there are. It's just hard in life, but actually, I think you got me through those thi those things, having operations, uh, recovery. All these things are really hard. And I. You were in so, hospital for twelve nights, weren't you? with your lung cancer. And um, I had one night at home. And yeah, I, I was two nights in intensive two care. Two nights in intensive home. care. But then, then I decided I'd, I decided to sleep on two chairs in the hospital next to your bed because I decided I'd much rather be uncomfortable with her than comfortable without her. You were very, very sorry. No, I, I was so, so miserable at home and, yeah. and perfectly happy sleeping on two plastic chairs <laughs> but yeah so blessed to have someone supporting you through the difficult times in life when when mick um my my good friend died on the squash court with me at age 42 um i just could not understand why god would allow this amazing man to die of a heart attack um at that age leaving six children and I've, I, um, I remember I couldn't sleep that night of course and five o'clock in the morning I went for a long walk and I just said to the Lord, Lord I have no idea why this has happened but I'm not going to stop trusting you and that was just a decision. I didn't feel particularly close to the Lord at that time in fact uh, when, when C.S. Lewis talks about a door slammed in the face that's more how I felt. I felt um, a sort of almost an absence of God at that time. Um, but I just decided I would keep on believing in spite of what had happened and in spite of the fact that I didn't feel anything except guilt about what had happened um, and responsibility for, for the fact I was playing squash with him, which was in many ways irrational, but I still felt it. And um, so yeah, that was a really tough uh, couple of years after that, I think. I mean, well, there are a lot of challenges. I think yeah. having small children is having small children is quite a big challenge too. Sleepless nights, exhaustion, all that. It, those yeah. are hard times too. And uh, you were probably very busy some of those times. You know, life has lots of ups and ups and downs. And yeah. I think one's just got to go with the ups and downs in it. Yeah. We've been very blessed with our children because our children, first of all, I would say they are my chief advisors, our chief advisors. Um, they are now. They are now. Not they weren't necessarily when they were babies, but they were. <laughs> um, we had children quite early on. Um, and so we were straight into parenthood quite early on, which I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing, but it's fairly full, full on. Um, and it is, you know, sleepless nights, hard work. I had my grandson here this morning I, helping out for the morning. And I was just by the end of the morning thinking, oh, my goodness. But every room was slightly destroyed. And you're exhausted. And you forget, looking back, how hard it is to bring up children yeah. and to do it well, but how important it is and how important it is to support one another in those things. So they have a huge impact. But... I feel nothing but blessed to have had children. I'm sure there were times or nights when all you want is sleep. And sometimes you do feel you need a break and someone, you know, to go out and do something on your own for, for 10 minutes, half an hour. Um, but now as they grow up, I, they are so wise. We've apologised to them many times over many I things. have apologised. You were a brilliant mother. No, but I, made, I, I did make lots of mistakes. I think with we both our children, did. And we both made mistakes. Well, I don't know that you did, darling, but but well, but I there certainly plenty did. Plenty of, of regrets of things that you know, looking back, I wouldn't do now um, with wisdom and hindsight. 
but they've been kind enough, I hope, to forgive us. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we won't make that mistake with our grandchildren. We but, have 10 grandchildren now. And which they're, is they're, nothing but a blessing. Yeah. It's nothing blessing but a blessing. upon blessing. Mm. Mm. There are lots of things I'd do different. I mean, if I could change one thing in our marriage, what would it be? Probably there are lots of things. Um, probably. Oh, go on. Well, no, <laughs> quite a lot with the children of of what I, of choices I made with them, what I should have done or wouldn't shouldn't do. And what do you want me to do differently? <laughs> I don't know, Nikki. Not put your wet swimming things all over the the, the arga. The arga. Yeah, I think I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I swim in the seven time and every take your morning. shoes off and not walk with dirty shoes around the house. But I, anyway, <laughs> I swim in the seven time every morning, and when I come back, I have so at this time of year when the temperature is five degrees in the seven time. I I wear like socks, gloves, two hats, and then you drape it all around the house as well as my swimming trunks and a towel. And then when I come back. And it's difficult to find places to put it that are warm and they're going to be dry the next day. So you come and irritate that is all, me. That's always a bone of contention <laughs> as to where they're to go. But yeah, but somehow we still laugh about it. Which... Every day, but it just happens. <laughs> Every day, nothing changes. <laughs> um, but I, you know, there are lots of things daily, wouldn't it? You know, you. You snap when you don't need, need to snap. You, there must be lots of things that you do. Yeah, I have snapped. Mm, no, I sometimes I grumpy. So. I'm very grumpy sometimes. But I've um, seen I get cross once with someone, not me, but someone. Yeah, but you know, of course, there are. 1987, things. that was. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of things actually. You're pretty. You you are quite patient because my timing isn't very good, and I am quite often late. And I managed to recycle Nicky's squash rackets, and you took that very well. But a brand I say new. recycled them. You <laughs> threw them away. <laughs> so there are there are things that do happen, that was and just you funny. took a, you take those quite well. <laughs> I don't think you need gender stereotype roles in a marriage, do you? It's like, um, what do you think? I don't think you need as such that, but you tend to end up doing the things that you feel most um, relaxed doing. I mean, I happen to do more of the cooking than you do. You Have could you? do it, but I don't trust you to. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a lot safer if you're doing it. I think I would offer to do it, but I think, I think, uh, I, yeah. So I think some of those things, yeah, I probably look to Nicky to carry the suitcases. He is stronger than me and heavy, and they're heavy and things like that. And you often put out the dustbins. But I wouldn't sort of say that's his role and this is my role. I do think we should do a lot of things together. And, and I don't expect in someone else's marriage to be the same. I think it will be different. So I, I think everybody's got to work out what you like doing. And as long as you're sharing things and both carrying eat the burdens together. I don't think it matters. What's the most important thing we've learned about love in marriage? Well, it's not bad looking at um, 1 Corinthians 13. To start with, love is patient. <laughs> and Gips I, is very, very patient. I'm not at all patient. But all those things are terribly important. Love is patient, love is kind. Or, you know, all those things are very, very important in in marriage, kindness, goodness, faithful, you know, all those things you need in a marriage. You need it in every, every relationship, but you need it in a marriage to be those things, to be kind, to be patient, because things, things go wrong and things can be irritating. I probably get more irritated with you than you do with me. There's a lot more about me to be irritating than there is about Pips. <laughs> Pips. I I always think that if any Pips would have made anyone happy, nonsense, uh, she would have done. Nonsense. You would have done Pip. You would have been. No one could have been unhappy if they'd been married to you. I just got lucky and got married to you. <laughs> I think love is more than a feeling. Um, I mean, I do feel huge love for Pips all pretty much all the time. I mean, I that, so I don't want to play down the feeling, but it is love is about much more than a feeling. Love is about um, love is, as as Pips has said, love is patient and kind and 
it's about how you treat one another. Yeah. Um, and that is um, love in action. And that is probably more important than the feelings. Though I'm blessed to have the feelings. I know not everybody has those kind of feelings, uh, but um, I, I definitely, I do, and I, that's a huge blessing. But um, I have to be aware that it's not just love is not just about the feelings. It's about serving and doing things and um, acts of kindness as well as feelings of love. Mm. You need the love of God in your heart to love others and I think that's even even in a marriage you want because God's love is so amazing and, yeah. and God's love is unconditional it's not counting counting up the, all the, the things that you that irritate you or go wrong so I think it's that unconditional love that we need the love of God to love and that that is and I, and it, if you need to sense God's love, I need to sense God's love to love and to be loved and to be loving, it, I think, whatever yeah, it is. I mean, we love because he first loved us. Mm. And again, it was an act of love. Jesus, St. Paul wrote, the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus didn't just feel love, he did something. He died for each one of us on a cross. That's how much God loves me mm. and you. And um, so it was an action. But then the Holy Spirit gives us an experience of God lo God's love. We feel God's love. The love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us, Romans 5, verse 5. So love is primarily about how we treat one another but also if our love is to be like God's love we feel love and that comes from the Holy Spirit so we need both to understand the cross and to experience the Holy Spirit to know God's love and out of that comes our love for one another and for everybody else in the world. I found it very helpful when I first heard about the five love languages it just clarified these things between for myself to understand myself and to understand Nikki and perhaps even to understand our children a bit and to understand how different we are people's love language I would say number one is acts of service <laughs> which she doesn't get many of um, presents which she gets even less of <laughs> and then uh, thirdly uh, probably words of encouragement which she gets loads of that's true I like them all um, Nikki's love languages are touch, encouragement, and definitely not presence. Yeah, presence is um, not even, <laughs> it's like the opposite of a love language. Please don't waste anything on anyone giving me presence. After 46 years of marriage, what does intimacy look like, Pips? <laughs> We're so blessed that we love each other, really, mm. aren't we? We are so blessed. I sort of feel... And actually, you learn more and more about each other. And there's still things to learn and to, to become more open and more accepting and more real, I think, don't you think? Mm. I certainly got lots to improve on. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> We've got a few years left. Hopefully. We can get, well, I can get better. I, did, I honestly don't think it's possible for you to get better, Pips. No, no, no. You are, could. you are perfect, Pips. Mm -hmm. I, I feel very blessed because, um, I, you know, I didn't expect to be more in love with Pips now, 46 years on, than on our wedding day. But I, I feel that all the time. I feel so blessed to be just m madly, crazily in love with, with her. I, I said to, to uh, Pips once, I'm, I'm madly, crazily in love with you. I love you so, so much. And she said, and I put up with you. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> but there's quite a bit of truth in that. I she do. has a lot more to put up with than I do. Nonsense. I, I have a very easy life. I don't know that that's true. But um, I do think humour is really important. Because you've got to laugh at things. There are so many 
things that go wrong in life and yeah, you can get irritated and all those things. But if you can turn it into a joke and have a laugh about things, I, I do think that relieves the tension and um, helps Pips you Pips makes along. me laugh all the time. I spend my whole time laughing. She's, she was very <laughs> funny. We did a conference at the weekend. Um, what is she? Because they asked, are we being uh, interviewed at this conference? There were 11,000 people there, 30,000 people watching online. And um, what, did they, what did he ask you? He asked something about, um, you know, what you love most about about each other. I mean, he threw it out and I was sort of, you know, well, how do you answer <laughs> this? Nikki said something very sweet. And, uh, you know, if I'd had more time, I would have said that Nikki was, you know, generous and kind <laughs> and wise and all those things. Uh, but I talked about his faith, that, you know, following Jesus all his life and not wandering from the left right. And uh, then I <laughs> said, and most of his jokes are funny. <laughs> That's the thing that I just. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are. Um, we've been married for 46 years. What has kept us married? Um, I think, again, I'd go back to our, Sandy Miller in our preparation. Yeah. He, uh, uh, he's now Bishop Sandy Miller. He's the most wonderful, yeah. wonderful man. He said, don't even joke about divorce, when, you know, when you get married. Don't even joke about it. And you, those are some of the things, because it's so easy to say, oh, you're irritating, I'll divorce you know, ha-ha, but actually even those things are dangerous. In other words, don't let the thought even cross your mind. You're... Yeah. And even people like Rick Warren sort of said he had a terrible first three years, but they, you know, they had decided they were married and they were going to work it through. And uh, But we were very blessed. We had wonderful role models around us. Nikki and Scylla Lee, who have written the marriage uh, book, and run the marriage course. Which also is a thing that's helped us, I think. I mean, watch, not only watching their marriage, but the marriage course itself, yeah. which we've done a couple of times now, yes. uh, once in lockdown. Um, and it's brilliant. It's yeah. absolutely brilliant. And, yeah. um, and improving your marriage, however good your marriage yeah. is, the marriage course is a way you can enrich it. Yes, yes. And have great conversations about all sorts of important subjects. So and we had so we had them, Nikki and Scylla, who are the experts, I'd say, on marriage and family life, as our best friends. So that was a real help. Sandy and Annette, who are our church leaders, and we worked with them for for many many years, had a wonderful role model, believed strongly in family, and we were so so blessed to work with them. So I think the importance of having strong marriages, strong families around you, good role models make a phenomenal difference. You know, that that verse, two is better than one, but a threefold cord cannot easily be broken. And I do feel our faith is right at the center of our marriage. And it needs to be. We're, we're, we're sinners, we're failures. I remember when we first got married, you saying, remember that we're sinners. And I was think, said, felt, I don't know whether I said, Speak for yourself. <laughs> Quite <laughs> you right. might be a sinner, but what now about I joke you? that Pips, Pips is, apart from Jesus, Pips is the only person born without original sin. Obviously we spoke not. at a Catholic conference and I had to say, and of course, if you're Catholic, Mary also <laughs> is without original sin. But, um, but. <laughs> but yeah, you, but actually it is good to know, you know, we are fallen and our partner's not going to be perfect. We, you know, we'd love our partners to be perfect, but they're not. And I think if Jesus can forgive and love our, our spouse unconditionally, then we've got to at least try to do the same. <laughs> I think for both of us, the verse at uh, John 10, 10, when Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have life in all its fullness. I think that meant a lot to us because neither of us were Christians. Um, when we first met, uh, but I think that verse was a verse that has meant a lot to us because we found in Jesus that Jesus came that we might have life and have it in all its fullness and that Jesus makes difference to everything, including our marriage and our uh, parenting and our grandparenting and all our relationships yeah. and brings life and life in all its fullness. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and another sort of more family verse I, is about 
as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And I always sort of, as our family, we will serve the yeah. Lord. Our marriage is far, far better than anything I could have dreamt or imagined. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't think I had any thoughts really about what married life would look like. I, we just It just seemed an exciting time, very exciting to get married. I had no concept of the future. And I think I can only, only think that God has been good to us. Yeah. The goodness of God. I love that song, the goodness of God. And I think that sort of sums up really. Yeah. The word that I would use to describe our marriage is blessed. Mm. I feel very blessed to marry Pips. Yeah, I, I feel very blessed too. Um, I think we've had a lot of fun over all the years. A lot of fun. A lot of laughs. <laughs>